brighten your day by watching the Time with Teresa television show. And now, your host, Teresa Westbrook. Welcome to the program. I want you all to press the record button and grab a pen and some paper because today's guest is going to have a lot of insight to share with you. Our guest is Dr. James Tan. He is the president of the Covenant Fellowship of Ministries International. Through his international outreach, he advises and oversees a growing number of churches and ministries. In addition to planting and building churches, his organization also coordinates various humanitarian outreach activities. He's known for insightful biblical teaching and flowing with the anointing and the gifts of the spirit. Please help me welcome my friend and Dr. James Tan to the program. Yay, Theresa, I cannot tell you how excited excited I am to be on here with you. This is the highlight of my day for sure, for sure, for sure. You couldn't possibly be any more excited than I am to be interviewing you. <laughs> I tell you what, this is, I know, I feel like we've, I feel like we've talked for the longest time back and forth on Messenger and different things, and we finally get to do this. So this is going to be great. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, let's get right into this interview. I don't want to waste another moment uh, with uh, any uh, thing that's distracting what you have to bring to our audience today. But to begin with, I would like you to share a little bit of your testimony with our viewers. Well, you know, I grew up in a Catholic family. Um, and I, I always tell people I was the best Catholic in my family. <laughs> The only thing is that as uh, by the time I hit by the time I hit eight years old, um, I started having what I didn't know back then, but what I know now to be demonic manifestations in my life. I would see, I would hear, and physically I would have sometimes something touch me. Um, and of course, I didn't know what to do about it. My folks didn't know what to do about it. But in a nutshell, the grace and mercy of God, I walked into a bookstore one day and I found Brother Kenneth E. Hagen's little book, I Went to Hell. And as a 13-year-old, that was what all I could afford to buy. And I bought that little book. And for those of you who know what I'm talking about, you know that all of Brother Hagen's little books, they are the little out prayer to receive Jesus at the back of it. And so for six months, I would pray that prayer every night before bed. In my little 13-year-old Catholic world, I didn't know all that it meant, but I knew that it did something for me on the inside. And that was really my born-again experience. Six months afterwards, by the mercy of God, someone at school invited me to an assembly of God church, and that was the first time ever I had stepped into a Protestant church. <laughs> and that's a story all in itself. But I tell you what, the grace and the mercy of God knows where to find you right where you are. Found me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, that that's quite a conversion then. <laughs> quite yeah. a ver conversion. That's a that's an episode all by itself. So do you have that written anywhere where our viewers could follow up on that story? I do have a little bit about it written in my book, Releasing the Miraculous. Um, I've got a copy here, Releasing the Miraculous that just came out. Um, and and it's, uh, you know, I share a little bit about it. Part of the reason why is because I didn't want to sensationalize it. I didn't want to sensationalize. I wanted to, I wanted to, I wanted to make big what God had done for me, but not what the enemy had done for me. Yes. Yes. You know, I didn't want to, I didn't want to sensationalize the torment that comes with the enemy, but I did want to talk about how big and merciful our God is and how wonderful and how he saves to the uttermost. You know, so portions of that story, portions of it are told in that book, Releasing the Miraculous. Uh, and and I, I guess I'll talk more about it in upcoming books that are, that are coming up. All right. All right. Well, we'll leave the viewers with a cliffhanger for right now and move on to our next uh, question. I can, you, I can tell you the ending so far, I made it. By the message <laughs> of God, I made it so, so far. And, and you're powerful in the kingdom of God. You're powerful in the kingdom of God. So let's talk about your ministries around the world. Share more about those. Well, um, the bulk of the churches that I have the privilege of having a voice into in a very relational way, are in Asia, 
in Malaysia and in Indonesia in particularly, which, as you all know, are not exactly and are not always the most friendly to Christian churches. In fact, Indonesia has the world's largest population of Muslims uh, in any one country. Indonesia alone has 280 million Muslims. Mm. And so back, back then, whenever I started out in ministry, um, the Lord was good and gracious to me and helped me see that too many times as believers and as ministers, for sure, we try to make converts when in reality we should be making disciples. Now, the difference between a convert and a, and a disciple is relationship. A convert is someone who attends a meeting and answers an altar call, but a disciple is someone who is in, in an ongoing relationship, both with God and with man, to be discipled into the image of Christ. And so I learned very quickly that the best way to grow anything is through discipleship. And so those churches have flourished on an average year outside of the travel restrictions that we have now when I am back in Asia doing those uh, pastors meetings, which are the main thing I do there because it's so important to raise leaders. We will have 1,500 pastors come every year mm. for a four-day event. And I preach all four days myself. And I do them regionally. It's easier for everyone to get to. Um, and so that's something that we do. And through those churches, we organize humanitarian outreaches. Um, the reason why we do the humanitarian outreaches is because then it shows the community that they are in. And again, you have to understand that since those are predominantly uh, not Christian countries, um, the places that they're in are not always necessarily friendly to having a church in that particular community. And so we base our humanitarian outreaches from the church that has a relationship with us to put the church in a different light and to give it some social relevance to the community that they're in. You know, uh, God hasn't just given us the gospel, but he's given us wisdom on how to present the gospel and get the gospel into communities because God's heart is for people. And so it, when we do those humanitarian outreaches, really they are a tool to promote the local churches there. You know, I'm a big local church guy, Ms. Theresa. The more you talk to me, you're going to find out I'm a big believer in the local church. Uh -huh. You know, because Jesus said, I'm going to build my church. And that's the only thing he said he was going to build. Mm -hmm. The only thing he said he was going to build. So in a nutshell, uh, that's what we do uh, around and everywhere that I get a chance to do it in. Well, that is awesome. And now here you are. It, uh, that looks like you may land in Tulsa, Oklahoma. So what has called you over here to the States? Well, um, I have a relationship with a, with, a, with, a, with a rather sizable and influential church in the Midwest. And for almost the past 20 years, I would go up there every year and do a week-long Holy Ghost meeting. In fact, I still go there. In fact, this year, I've been there five times. <laughs> um, and I never thought anything else. I would do those Holy Ghost meetings, turn around, fly back home, and be perfectly happy. Never tried starting a mailing list, never brought a book table, nothing. Again, nothing wrong with starting a mailing list or a book table. I just wasn't let to do that. About five or six years ago, when I was in the pastor's green room getting ready to go down to the church there in the Midwest to go preach, I had a visitation from the Lord. As real as I am talking to you right now, I had a visitation from the Lord. And part of what the Lord told me was that I was to bring my supply stateside. And I got to tell you, it shook me. It shook me so bad that I didn't tell anyone about it for two years. It took me two years to pray it out. You know, anything that God tells you, if it's worth you hearing, it's worth you praying about. I think too many times, sometimes as believers, we run too quick with the things we say we hear, and we don't prepare the way with prayer. So I prayed about it for two years, and, uh, um, and I said, well, God, if, if I'm going to have to do this, I'm willing to obey it. You're just going to have to put me in touch with the right people of the when, the where, the how, and the who. And so... Um, as they say in the word, my gift has brought me before great men, and here I am on your show amongst others to do what God has called me to do. You know, I'll tell you what's interesting about that. Let me throw this little nugget in, what's interesting about that. When I was a kid growing up in Singapore, Lester Sumrall used to come to Singapore every year and do a week-long meeting there. 
And as a kid, I used to attend all those meetings after I got bored again. I would attend those meetings and I would just sit there wide eyed, mouth open, but just, I was just soaking it all in. And I remember one year when he was up there, by the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, he suddenly said, the day is coming where I believe, this is Dr. Summerall saying, he says, the day is coming, I believe, where sons and daughters from around the world who've been blessed by America will come back to America as missionaries to help her in her hour of need. And for whatever reason back there as a kid, that always resonated with me, although I never had plans to move. It, it, it never crossed my mind to move. You know, people from Singapore don't really move. It's a beautiful place to be in. Yes. <laughs> people yes. from Singapore don't move. They don't do that. <laughs> you know, you know, they don't, they'll go on vacation, but they want to come back. <laughs> but I remember that, that God, had, God is raising up people for America. Yes, yes. Because God's not done with this land yet. The seed that this land has sown around the world the friend that this, that, that this land is to, to, to God's friends are important to God and God is faithful. Amen. Amen. Oh. That's beautiful. Yes. Well, uh, well, we're delighted to have your gifts and your talents here. And um, so I'm just curious, though, how are you going to keep your ministries abroad thriving and then growing all these ministries over here? Do you have a plan? <laughs> <laughs> I do. And that's the beauty of discipleship. And that's the beauty of an apostolic mindset. In the old tradition of church, the pastor, the sheep does everything. But in the scriptural tradition, in the scriptural apostolic mindset of church, you raise disciples, and disciples are those who imitate you as you imitate Christ. In other words, the success of a ministry is based on how many you've raised to run with you as you run after Christ. And so, uh, and I think that God's given me an opportunity with all these travel restrictions. I haven't been able to travel out there in two years, almost two years. Oh, that's right. That's right. And yeah. God, just this morning, just this morning, I just did a Zoom conference with our leaders in Malaysia. So it's actually great that you asked me that because just this morning, we just had all the Malaysian leaders in there for a meeting that, that, I, would, that I do maybe four or five times a year now on Zoom with them. Um, so yeah, the work of God continues when you've been able to raise disciples. You know, every, every, every ministry needs to raise sons and daughters. Amen. Let's put it that way. Every yeah. ministry should have sons and daughters, not just members, sons and daughters. Right, right. There's a difference. Children of God, there yes, is a yes. And yeah. yes, I think there's, um, there's very unique ways, very unique ways. Uh, we are the church. Right. And we advance the kingdom of God and Jesus Christ, not a denomination, but Jesus Christ, and there's very unique ways, and I'll just throw this in just for a moment, because I don't want to take any of your time here, but um, there are unique ways I have myself have ministered uniquely with pastors in other countries where they were Muslims, and they would carry me in via the web, the internet, the Zoom, whatever, and put up a big like a uh, projector screen where I could minister there and I could see as far as my camera would allow me to see, yeah. but they could see, but miracles would happen. It would be just like being there in person. And it was such a blessing to participate in some of those services. So I think the, we're all coming around as a necessity of what has happened with COVID but yeah. it is actually going to advance the kingdom of God via the web and different things. So uh, well, there's a lot to think about, but I don't, I can't get into that. <laughs> let, me, let me add to that because what you brought up was such a great point. Um, about eight years ago, the Lord started teaching me about the transferability of the anointing. And he was teaching me that the anointing, can travel out of me just laying hands. Of course, we know that Jesus healed by the spoken word. We know that we know that um, the uh, the handkerchiefs from Paul's body. We know that the shadow from Peter's body was able to cause healing. 
But one of the things that the Lord was teaching me was that the anointing is a transferable and a, a, it can travel outside of you. Now, now think about this. Think about this. You talked about media. You talked about the web. But think about this. How do we know that the anointing can live outside of a person and continue making disciples? Well, we have this, the Bible here. Here's proof. Here's proof. The Bible, the written word was the technology of the day of Jesus. Oh, good. Yeah. It was, it was, it was the, it was all the technology they had. And God chose to put all of his word into the technology that he had. And here you and I are thousands of years later, not only are we still being discipled by that word, but we are still receiving from the anointing of the ministry of Peter and Paul and James and all those. We're still receiving from that ministry. We're still receiving from the anointing. So I, I propose this. I propose that if anyone's anointing can only work on a Sunday morning, it's probably faulty. <laughs> it's 24-7, seven, seven days a week, even when, even when you want a day off and you don't want to do it. <laughs> right. So, so when, I, when I understood that, that God was still discipling me, I was still receiving. Think about this. We're still receiving impartations from Elijah and Elisha. We're still receiving impartations from David and Solomon. Yeah. We still are because God put it in the technology of the day. You know, now the flip side of that is that then it, it, it concerns me when church, when ministers and believers don't want to embrace the technology of the day. And that's what I love about what you're doing, Miss Teresa. I love that you are on every channel that's available to you to get the word out because I've learned to see these shows and I've learned to see these seeds really as seed that we're putting out. We're putting our seed into the airwaves is what we're doing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. God's we've, gone off script. we've gone off script, but God's helping someone with this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's all right. That's all right. I know you flow in the Holy Spirit and I'm fine with that. And uh, I appreciate that. Uh, and you are so right. It's we've got to become kingdom minded yes. not denominational minded not yes. church building minded but kingdom of god minded and it's a big kingdom and it's a big world yeah and that kingdom that kingdom when you look at scripture makes inroads into every sphere of society every sphere you want to talk about politics well look at joseph look at daniel I mean, look at, look at, look at, look at the access Moses had to Pharaoh. He wasn't just some common guy, because if he were, he couldn't just walk in and say, I want to talk to Pharaoh. I've got something to discuss with him. <laughs> you know, um, even, even, even Joseph of Arimathea, who took the body of Jesus. Think about that. He must have had some social clout. You don't just walk in there and say, I want the body of the guy that the Romans and the Hebrew nation just, or what he must have had some social clout and I'll, I'll i'll tell you the day is coming when we as believers need to recognize the social inroad that god has afforded us and use it for kingdom purposes absolutely absolutely we have to. and the only way we can recognize that is to recognize that the anointing that's on our life is not just for sunday morning amen <laughs> It's for any breathing moment where you awake and I'm awake and, and we're alive, that, it, that's for it. If you're a housewife, there is an anointing that you can, you can bring it. If you're a business person, if you are a student at school, if you are a, a grandparent, it doesn't matter what you are and who you are, the anointing on your life as believers is meant to be infused and defused to those around you. Absolutely. And, and we are off script, but let's just go with it. Um, <laughs> we've our the church's job is to empower the believers, empower right. them to go out and sow right. the seeds of, of Christ, to sow the word of God, to pray, to lay, lay hands on people, bring them sick. So we just encourage everyone, everyone who has a relationship with Jesus Christ as their Lord and personal right. savior, who had been born again in the kingdom of God. We're telling you to go. Go with what you have and gather more, gather more from the apostolic centers, from the churches, from yeah. your pastors, from books, yeah. 
for, of course, yes. from the Bible and especially through prayer as well in your own yes. personal relationship. But you yes. go and you tell people to come to Jesus. We go, but we tell them to come to Jesus. <laughs> right. That's right. That's exactly right. You know, I've always said that in any one country, there are more than enough believers to cause every kind of a divine revolution that's necessary. The issue isn't God give us the strength. The issue is God open our eyes that we, we can see the riches and the inheritance of glory that's ours in Christ Jesus. If we see ourselves as seated in heavenly places in Christ, if we see ourselves as a king under the king of kings, if we see ourselves as ruling and reigning with Christ, if we see ourselves in the positions that God has placed us in, if we see ourselves as the Christians, the little Christ ones, the little anointed ones, who I tell you, everyone will be rushing out to have a show like you, Mr. Risa, because we would all want to be on the airways and do everything we can. <laughs> yes, it's, it's exciting. You know, um, sometimes people think it's boring living for God and that we miss out on so much, but oh, that is so wrong. It's exciting living for the Lord and we are not missing out on really anything but hardships and heartaches, even though we have trials and tribulations, there right. is benefits that comes with our trials and tribulations. Benefits and, that, for sure. The main benefit is that we win. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right there, we win. And while we're on the way to winning, we can have the peace of God. Yes. Yes. Amen. You can have peace until you win. And then you can have rejoicing afterwards and so it's it's all good going on up from here you know <laughs> amen i don't i don't have any regrets giving my heart to jesus i don't have any regrets about that at all you know um just none i i'm so thankful so thankful that i know him i'm so very thankful that i know him well tell me uh, how was your family on board with this is a big move is your family on board with all of this well i tell you what when i got born again um, my mom and dad, uh, Ooh, I tell you, they, they, that was not the thing they wanted to hear. <laughs> Let me put it this way. They weren't great Catholics. And again, I'm sure there are great Catholics. Just my folks are just not one of them. So if, if there are great Catholics listening, God bless you. I'm sure there are great ones. You know, we just won't, we just won't count it in that number. Let's put it that way. We just won't count it in that number, you know. Um, but what happened was that during that same time, my mom had a hysterectomy. And she had problems recovering afterwards to where her wound got infected. And we, me and new, new me, my new, new me and my new church family, we got to pray in. And I remember, I'll, I'll never forget, I went home one night and I told her, I said, Mom, I, I, just came up from, I just came up from the little prayer meeting. And I said, Mom, we're praying for you. God's going to heal you. And she was so mad at me. And I remember her screaming, I don't want you praying. And I don't, want, you know, she just went off on me. But did you know that the Lord healed her? Mm. Did you know that the Lord healed her? Praise God. I tell you what, he healed her. And she knew that it was a supernatural thing. You know, can I, can I challenge everyone with this? We need to start being bold about allowing for the supernatural aspects of our God to be manifest again through us and in us and around us. We got to start being bold again. I, I, I tell you, when I grew up, that, that little assemblies of God church that I grew up in, they would preach about winning the loss all the time. And I, I think we need to start talking about those things again. It's time again where we start talking about the believer's responsibility in winning the loss, the believer's responsibility in going out to the highways and the byways, whatever that means, handing out a track, starting a conversation with someone, knocking on the door, whatever that means. But we need to start talking about those things again. Why? Because the command to go into all the world hasn't changed. Right. Times have changed. But, but by the way, People haven't really changed either. Right, right. <laughs> a person who was bound by alcohol in the days of Jesus is still as bound as they are today. 
the person who's bound by, by fear and worry in the times of Jesus still as bound as they are today. It sometimes concerns me when I hear people say we need a new anointing. I understand what they mean. I wish they would clarify their terms a little bit better. When we say a new anointing, what we mean is a fresh infusion of what we already have. We don't mean God's going to give me something new that 2,000 years of Christianity hasn't had before. Why? Because if he has to give me something new for 2021 that 2,000 years of Christianity hasn't had before, how is God going to apologize to 2,021 years of Christians who didn't have that special anointing to live the victorious life? Exactly. Mm-hmm. No, listen, friends, we have right now, because we have the Word and the Spirit of God, and those two are unchangeable, we have everything we need to live the victorious life that God intended for us right now. We just need to rise up and take what's already ours. Amen. Amen. Well, I can't believe that time is almost up already. I, know, I was looking at the clock myself. I was like, oh, I think, I think we're gone. <laughs> but I want to take a couple of minutes. Uh, let's let our viewers know we're going to do another program. We're going to talk about your book. We're going to talk about the gifts of the spirit. So you want to tune in for the next program all about that. Have your pens and papers ready and press the record button on that one as well. But we have about a minute and a half, Dr. James. And so we've been talking about the anointing flowing in the spirit. You've exhorted it with our our, our viewers today, but just take about a minute and a half and flow in the spirit, whatever the Lord is laying on your heart to direct to someone specifically today. For those of you who are watching today, I want you to know that God isn't done with you yet. Now, when I say that, I don't just mean in your current situation, whatever that is. And it might look dark and it might look monotonous, but I'll tell you this. Not only, is not, not only is God not done working with you and helping you and lifting you, but he isn't done with turning your life into a testimony and a blessing to those around you. And I want to stir you up on the inside and tell you that by the Spirit of God, you watching this program is no accident, is no coincidence, even though you might be a regular listener, a regular viewer. God has a plan to stir in you. And as you allow Times run out on us, but as you allow, the Spirit of God will stir in you, and God can rebirth a vision in you. And I know that He's doing that with you today. I sense that in my heart. He's rebirthing the dreams that you thought you had lost. They're coming back to you, and you will be able to walk into them with strength and victory this time. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Dr. James, so much. What an honor and a delight to have you on the program. And I knew this would just touch the tip of the iceberg. There's so much more. So I'm glad we've got a part two coming up. So uh, I'm going to say goodbye to the viewers and we'll see you all at the next program. But uh, we want to thank you for watching. We want to thank our guest, Dr. James Tan, for coming and sharing his words and his insight and his anointing with us. So be sure that you stay tuned to ca uh, catch the episode number two. And we'll be talking about his books and the gifts of the spirit. God bless you and share this program with everyone you know. God bless you and thanks for watching. Thanks for watching the Time with Teresa television show. For guest and sponsorship opportunities, contact Teresa today.